Starting off with Best Picture, of course, and at the top, we have Oppenheimer. I think if we've learned anything from the past few months, and really ever since Oppenheimer came out, and even before Oppenheimer came out, just the second it was announced that Christopher Nolan was directing a biopic that starred guys like Robert Downey Jr. and Emily Blunt and just such a great cast, I think it almost felt inevitable that this film was going to be a huge contender at the Oscars and be a favorite to win Best Picture. I know back in April, I had it as my favorite to win Best Picture, and that just hasn't changed. Not only is it a great movie, but it's sort of a career achievement for Christopher Nolan, who's brought so much money to cinema and has made IMAX like a thing. You know, IMAX wasn't really around before Nolan just really rejuvenated it and gave it that juice to become profitable and marketable to other filmmakers and studios and whatnot. So yeah, like whether or not you like Oppenheimer, I think that this is sort of a way to see it as a career achievement award for Nolan. Following Oppenheimer, I have The Holdovers just because The Holdovers actually looks like it could win multiple Oscars. Divine Joy Randolph might as well be a locked. It is a very strong contender for original screenplay. And then Paul Giamatti has been beating Killian Murphy. So yeah, I mean, if it has three Oscars going into when they are announcing Best Picture, I think it really will feel like a bit of a race between Holdovers and Oppenheimer. And that's kind of surprising. I think a lot of us were expecting Barbie or Killers to really put up the biggest fight versus Oppenheimer, but it's actually kind of the little guy in The Holdovers. It's sort of like an interesting David versus Goliath dynamic, and I really like it, actually, and I'm really excited to see, and I think The Holdovers winning Best Picture would be awesome. I think it's definitely going to be Oppenheimer, but I would not be upset with the holdovers whatsoever. Even though it's been snubbed a lot, I still have Barbie as my number three. It's probably going to have the most nominations at the Oscars this year just because of categories like Best Song. It will probably win a lot of technicals like costumes, makeup, etc. So I think it'll be looking pretty good when we actually get to the best picture segment of the Oscars. It's also right now, in my opinion, the front runner for adapted screenplay, and we'll get into that a little later. But you know, just because of all of those, and because Margot Robbie might be getting nominated for best actress, uh, Ryan Gosling's gonna get a supporting actor nomination, you know, there's a lot of reasons why I think Barbie could still win best picture. I just don't really see it right now. And even though I have it at three, it's a very like, I don't know, pessimistic, I guess you could say, number three, where I'm just, I'm not feeling too good. Well, on the other hand, Anatomy of a Fall, for me, I'm feeling so good about. And honestly, like, I, I'm playing it a little safe, putting Anatomy of a Fall under Barbie. I think personally, I want to put it at three, but I just, I can't get over that, you know, that heap where it's just like a foreign film and, you know, like might not win anything, <laughs> but it's been doing so well at all of these awards. It's been getting nominated for a lot of things like the BAFTAs. It won at the Golden Globes for screenplay, you know, and Sandra Huller could have beaten Lily Gladstone, like that was probably really close for them. Um, you know, and I, I just think now that Lily Gladstone isn't even nominated at the BAFTAs, I think Best Lead Actress feels a bit more open now. You know, where it doesn't feel locked for Lily Gladstone, and we can see who will step right in and take that number one spot. I wouldn't be completely floored if that happened. So, yeah, I'm feeling good about Anatomy of a Fall. Also, Justine Trier could be getting a Best Director nomination, which would be really exciting. And I don't know, could it be like a parasite type of a thing? Probably not but like that would be really exciting and I'm really excited at that possibility. At five we have Poor Things, again gonna get a lot of nominations. Yorgos Lanthimos, Emma Stone will probably win 
And yeah, could I put it above anatomy? Could I put it above Barbie? Yes, but I don't know. I'm just not completely feeling it with this movie. I've always been a little cold when it comes to poor things. At six, we have Killers of the Flower Moon, which I think is a complete lock to get nominated for Best Picture. But then once you step outside of Best Picture, Earlier in the year, we were feeling really confident about Leo getting a nomination, De Niro getting a nomination, then Lily Gladstone after we saw the movie, I think everyone was really confident that she would win Best Actress. But now, I think things are starting to look a little worse. It's not getting nominated everywhere. I mean, look at the BAFTAs. They snubbed it for almost everything except Best Film. and. Lily Gladstone lost to Emma Stone at the Critics' Choice. So we are just now in a predicament where killers just could get a best picture and could get a lot of technicals and then be snubbed in quite a few places. Like that could happen. It would suck, but it's possible. I think Maestro just kind of looks like it's going to be another Irishman for Netflix where it's going to be nominated for plenty of awards. I would not be surprised if it was like top three or top five in nominations, but then it's not going to win any of them. Or maybe it'll win like one weird technical like makeup or something because of the prosthetic nose. But aside from that, what does it have? I don't even think Bradley Cooper has that great of a chance at winning Best Actor. And then rounding out the movies that I am almost certain will at least get a Best Picture nomination are Past Lives and American Fiction. At this point, they've been doing pretty well at, you know, the awards that have been going on right now, American Fiction, I know, just won a Critics' Choice for Screenplay, and on the other hand, Past Lives, Tio Yo, got nominated at the BAFTAs, which was absurd, but also completely awesome. So yeah, I think both of these films definitely have a really, really, really good shot at getting Best Picture nominations, but I just don't see them doing a lot of damage outside of their nominations, kind of like Maestro, but just not getting nearly as many technicals. And then at 10, I right now have the zone of interest. And the main reason why I have it here is because what else is coming? You know, like what else would fill in that 10 spot? I think for a while, people were thinking a movie like All of Us Strangers, but like, Andrew Scott didn't even get nominated for a BAFTA. You know, like their lead actor, and this is a British film, the lead actor of a British film didn't get nominated for a BAFTA, which is very much biased towards nominating British people in British movies. So I think that really, really says something about All of Us Strangers, that, that it's just not strong. You know, it's not a strong movie, at least from what I've seen at all these other award shows. So unless like All of Us Strangers gets in, and in that case, great for that movie, I, I just can't see it right now. And so I have the zone of interest here at 10, but I'm like on the fence about it because it's like, you know, the reactions that I have heard just kind of say that, yeah, it's a great movie, but like, it doesn't work for conventional audiences. You know, so I don't know if it's going to work for the Academy, but after the zone of interest, like there's no real front runner contender for the 10 spot. For me, I actually have the boy in the heron as my front runner to barely squeak in to the best picture nominations. And I know it sounds really, really out there for the boy in the heron to get nominated for best picture. And I know not really anyone else is predicting it, but I've just had this gut feeling. It's a movie that feels like Miyazaki's last movie. And I think, you know, all these award shows are trying to nominate more interesting and diverse sets of movies for their awards. So what would be more fitting than for the first ever animated movie to be nominated for Best Picture to be what might be Miyazaki's last film. I know some people might be wondering, well, what about Spider-Verse? Spider-Verse has a sequel coming out, has a, essentially a part two coming out. It ends on a cliffhanger. 
you know, so I get it. It is my favorite movie of 2023, but I just don't see it getting nominated for Best Picture when it's essentially a part one. It's like how Dune, you know, like Dune was a part one, and yeah, it got a lot of Oscar nominations, but like Denis Villeneuve didn't even get nominated for Best Director because he's gonna get that nomination after part two, you know, like that's like already in the cards for him. And yeah, that's just kind of what the Oscars like to do to these part one, part two type of movies from what I've seen. But after that, we have some more normal runners up, you know, Color Purple, Salt Burn, May, December, Air, you know, just everything else on here. I guess I could see it. I just don't really think it's that likely. Best Director, I think, is also pretty interesting. Christopher Nolan, Greta Gerwig, Yurgos Lanthimos, I think all three of them are pretty much locks. Nolan will probably win it, and then just Lanthimos and Gerwig almost certainly are going to be nominated. But then I have these last two spots, which I think are most likely to be filled by two of three people. And right now, my front runners to fill them are Alexander Payne, who's at four, and then Justine Chrier, who I have at five. But I would not be surprised whatsoever if Martin Scorsese was filling one of those spots. Because, like, it's Martin Scorsese. Killers is an excellent movie. It's not just like it's an average Scorsese movie. Like, I think it is one of his best films, at least in my opinion. But this is a stacked year of films and directors and just everything. So I wouldn't be surprised if Scorsese got snubbed because he is Scorsese. And this isn't his last film. It doesn't need, like, I think people will kind of feel like they don't have to nominate him while, you know, nominating somebody like Justine Trier would be really nice because it's putting her in that American spotlight. And on the other hand, after Scorsese, you know, there's a few other people who I think could get nominations, but it's probably not very likely. Jonathan Glazer, of all of them, I think might have the best chance. He directed Zone of Interest, and if he does get nominated and sneak in there, then yeah, Zone of Interest will definitely be getting a Best Picture nomination, in my opinion. After that, you know, Bradley Cooper, uh, Celine Son, Cord Jefferson, um, and then I have Todd Haynes as well, you know, could be any of them. For the longest time, I thought Lily Gladstone would be an absolute lock to win Best Lead Actress, but right now, I'm kind of feeling Emma Stone because the BAFTAs snubbed Gladstone completely. You know, like, Michelle Yeoh, who I've been comparing Lee Gladstone to, I felt like this this for a while has felt a lot like Kate Blanchett versus Michelle Yeoh with Emma Stone versus Lily Gladstone. But Michelle Yeoh at least got nominated for the BAFTAs, but Gladstone didn't. And I don't know, I kind of feel like that might be a bit of a big deal. So currently I have Emma Stone at one, Lily Gladstone at two. Sandra Huller, I think, has a really sneaky chance to just go in and win the award herself. You know, not like a big, big chance, but like if Emma Stone or Lily Gladstone start to look like they're slipping, Sandra Huller's the next person up, in my opinion. But after those three, I don't really think anyone else has a shot at winning it, but the two other people I have being nominated are Carrie Mulligan and Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie, for a while, I think was favored to not get in, and then Fantasia Barino was favored to be the fifth person in, but Robbie has been getting nominated everywhere. While The Color Purple is performing really badly at awards, and is completely bombing at the box office as well. So I think that that is a bit of a double whammy, which could result in Burino being out and Margot being in. Carrie Mulgan, I have at four, gives a really good performance in Maestro. I think for a while, people thought that she had a chance to win this award, but Maestro just doesn't look that strong in terms of actually winning awards. Like, look at the BAFTAs that just happened, you know? It's the freshest thing in my mind, so I'm bringing up the BAFTAs a lot. They nominate Maestro in the majority of the categories, but then when you have Best Film, you don't put it in there. 
you know, and I, I think that that is a bit of a tell that Maestro as a movie just isn't that strong in terms of actually winning anything. So after those five, I have a bit of a toss up for who could be like the person that sneaks in there, who's like most likely to. Currently I have Annette Benning as my favorite to get in. Um, I don't want her to be nominated. I didn't like her performance in Nyad, but she's being nominated in a lot of places despite the fact that I don't want it to happen because obviously I have a lot of influence, you know? Um, and anyways, aside from Annette Bening, you also have Fantasia Barino and you have Greta Lee. I think that all three of them almost have an equal shot and might as well be tied for that sixth spot in my opinion, but if I were to put it in an order, it would be this. It would be Benning, Barino, and then Greta Lee. I also have Natalie Portman on here. I don't think it's too likely that she gets in. It really seems like, you know, critics seem to like May December a bit, but then actual like people who work in the industry don't seem to like May December as much. So that's why I don't have it being nominated for Best Picture. I don't have Portman as a favorite to be nominated here. And you'll see in the rest of this video, May December doesn't do too great in any of the other categories as well, or at least I don't think it will. And with that being said, let's switch over to lead actor where I have a new person who I think is the favorite, just like with lead actress. For months, I have thought it would be Killian Murphy. I kind of viewed Killian Murphy similar to how I viewed Lily Gladstone, where it was almost a lock that they would win. But Paul Giamatti has been performing so, so well. He's been getting nominated everywhere alongside Killian Murphy. And then at the Critics' Choice, he beat Killian Murphy. So currently, I have Giamatti as my favorite to win Best Actor. And honestly, that would be awesome. Killian is my number two, though. And I really think that it's kind of a toss-up between them. I know I have Bradley Cooper at three, but I feel like, like you have Killian and Giamatti right here, and then you kind of have Bradley Cooper and everyone else down here and lower. You know, like I think that there's a sizable gap between Paul Giamatti and, or sorry, not between Giamatti and Murphy, but f from Giamatti and Murphy to everyone else, and we will see if anyone else is able to climb over the gap, but I don't think so. I think it's really a two actor race right now. But yeah, Bradley Cooper and then Jeffrey Wright, I think are locks to be nominated. And then for this fifth spot, I see it as a total toss up between Leonardo DiCaprio, who I have just barely missing the cut, and Coleman Domingo, who I have making the cut. And again, I will point to the BAFTAs where DiCaprio was snubbed and then Coleman Domingo was in. So I'm using that as a bit of a reference for why I currently have DiCaprio as the odd man out. But if DiCaprio's in and Coleman is out, that would make complete sense to me and I wouldn't be too surprised. I also personally just didn't think that Coleman Domingo's performance was all that impressive. It was definitely the best part of Rustin, but that's not really saying much because I didn't think Rustin was all too good. While DiCaprio, on the other hand, I think gave a stellar, stellar performance and really deserves a nomination. I hope he gets it, but you know, it's a lot more than just how good your performance is. And then as the rest of the runner-ups, I kind of have Tio Yo and Barry Keoghan sort of grouped together in my eyes. You know, Tio Yo, I wouldn't have had on this video whatsoever, but then he got nominated for a BAFTA, so never mind. Now I have him right behind Leo DiCaprio. And then right behind him is Barry Keoghan. Like I said, you know, I'm not a big Saltburn fan and I also just don't see Saltburn getting nominated in a lot of places. I see the Academy viewing it similarly to how they viewed Babylon and Babylon didn't get a lot of nominations, nor did it get a any wins actually. I don't think it won anything at all. So yeah, I just, I don't really see Kyogen getting the nomination, but who knows, it could happen after that. Zac Efron for the Iron Claw. I just think the Iron Claw came out way too late in the year. It really should have come out in like August or September or October. And then I think Zac Efron would be a front runner to get a nomination. I honestly, if, if that movie came out back then, 
Zac Efron would probably be number five, but because it came out at Christmas, because not a lot of people have seen it, and it just hasn't had enough time, I just can't imagine Zac Efron getting in, but who knows, it's possible. And then Andrew Scott, I think, would have felt a lot closer to maybe getting a nomination. And I would have felt really good about the idea of Andrew Scott actually getting the fifth spot over DiCaprio and Coleman Domingo, but then he didn't get nominated for the BAFTAs, which was shocking, but there you go. Supporting actress, I feel like, is kind of a mess right now. You have Divine Joy Randolph, Emily Blunt, and Daniel Brooks, who I think are all completely solidified to pick up their nominations. But then you just don't really have favorites for the other two spots. You more so just have a bunch of candidates who you just don't really feel good about any of them. But there needs to be two other people who get nominated. So currently I have Jodie Foster and America Ferreira just barely making the cut. You know, Foster gives the best performance in Nyad. Not really saying much because I didn't think Nyad was all too good. And yeah, like it's kind of fun. And also she's Jodie Foster. So if she got nominated, I would get it. And then Ferreira gives the really big speech in Barbie that I thought was excellent. You know, does she really have any scenes outside of that speech? No. But that one scene is one of the best acted scenes of the year. So I think that alone deserves a nomination. And part of me just hopes that she gets a nomination. Coming in as my runner-ups, I have Rosamund Pike from Saltburn. I mean, if anybody is going to get nominated from Saltburn, it's probably going to be her. She did get nominated for a BAFTA. Then I have Julianne Moore because she's Julianne Moore. And I don't know, maybe they like May, December better than I'm expecting them to. Sandra Huller, I also have sneaking here from Zone of Interest. Like I said before about Rosamund Pike, Huller also got nominated for a BAFTA. And Huller will already almost certainly be getting a lead actress nomination, so maybe that'll bring some Academy members' attention to her as a supporting actress as well in Zone of Interest. So I could see her getting nominated for that performance, just possibly. Also, I have not seen Zone of Interest, but from what I've heard, the performances are like completely different types of performances, so it would make sense if both of them got nominated. And wrapping everything up, I have Penelope Cruz from Ferrari actually as just my bottom spot because she got a nomination with SAG as the supporting actress. So maybe I should actually have her a little higher here. You know, maybe I should actually have her getting an Oscar nomination because really, who knows who's gonna get it? It's, it's such a toss up. But she has a good performance in Ferrari, probably the best performance in Ferrari. So yeah, if she got a nomination, that would be great. But like I was saying about the Iron Claw, you know, came out at Christmas, just doesn't have enough juice to, you know, just in momentum to get an Oscar nomination. I mean, I definitely think Cruz is more likely than like Zac Efron, but still, I just don't really see it, which is why I have her at the bottom. And I think supporting actor is a lot less interesting. I think RDJ is a lock, you know, Ryan Gosling, he's a lock. Ruffalo, even though he did not get nominated at the BAFTAs, I still see him as an Oscar lock. And then Robert De Niro, I think him getting the BAFTA nomination to me solidifies that he's probably a lock for best supporting actor or not like to win, but to get nominated. But then that fifth spot I think is pretty interesting. To me, it's a toss up between Sterling K. Brown and Charles Melton. Charles Melton's probably the most likely person for May, December to garner an Oscar nomination. But I don't know, like I've been saying, May, December just hasn't been doing too well recently. So has it lost its legs to give Charles Melton the nomination? In my opinion, I think it kind of has, because I have Sterling K. Brown getting the final nomination, you know, American Fiction. It got released wider this past weekend, and yeah, I think a lot of people are liking it. A lot of people think that he has the best performance in the movie, and yeah, he steals every scene that he's in. It's really a great performance. I liked it a lot. and. 
he's got nominated in a lot of other places. So, you know, it would make sense. And if Charles Melton has to be the odd man out, I could see it. You know, I could also see Willem Dafoe or Dominic Sessa possibly getting nominated, but I think that those two are a lot more unlikely. Dafoe I could see getting nominated, but then if Dafoe gets nominated, I don't think Ruffalo will. In my opinion, just because we have enough deserving people, I don't think there's enough room for Ruffalo and Defoe to be nominated. But also, maybe because there's both of them, they'll both get like an equal amount of votes, which won't be enough to get either of them in. You know, that's probably why neither of them got the BAFTA, because they were probably split with the voting. So that could be kind of crazy, but I could kind of see that happening, where some people are like, all right, we'll give it to Ruffalo. Other people are going to give it to Defoe, but no one really wants to give it to both. And because of that, you know, you'll see Sessa sneak in, or you'll see Melton and Sterling K. Brown get in. That might happen, but I currently right now just see Mark Ruffalo as a lock and then Willem Dafoe as the odd man out when it comes to poor things supporting actors. Original screenplay I think is kind of interesting because now that Barbie isn't here, I think it's really opened up the fifth spot. I think Holdovers, Anatomy of a Fall, Past Lives, and Maestro are all complete locks. They are definitely almost 100% getting nominated, but then the last spot feels wide open. Currently I have Air sitting in there. I think that Air actually had a really fun screenplay, and if it got nominated, that would be really deserved, and I think that would be a good, like, one nomination for air. But I could see, like, May December getting in, or Saltburn sneaking in, or hell, maybe even the Iron Claw. So just kind of keep an eye out for that fifth spot in original screenplay. But the top four, I think, are just total locks because they are so strong, and they are all best picture candidates. So you know, while well, that fifth spot is going to be occupied by a film that probably won't be getting a best picture. Now that Barbie has switched to adapted screenplay, I of course have it winning adapted screenplay as well, but followed by American Fiction because it won the Critics' Choice. After that, I kind of just have three movies that are getting in because they are the three movies that they are, those being Poor Things, Oppenheimer, and Killers, you know, they're all Best Picture candidates, probably. So they'll probably get nominated for Adapted Screenplay as well. Maybe Zone of Interest could sneak in over Killers. I could see that just because Killers looks pretty weak right now. You know, and if it's gonna, if any of these films are going to be knocked out, I think it's Killers and that will probably be done by the Zone of Interest. I could also see all of us strangers maybe sneaking in or what I think is a really big dark horse, but could be really fun if it gets nominated, is Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Again, I don't think it'll get nominated, but just I have it as a huge, huge, huge dark horse. And if it does get nominated, then I'm the one who said it, okay? But what about all of you? What are your Oscar nomination predictions? Let me know in the comments down below. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.